In this edition of INN CEO Talks, I'm joined by Alan Gabor, the CEO of Integrated Cyber. And yes, we are talking about the business of cybersecurity, what you can do about it, and the tools that Integrated Cyber bring to its clients and the marketplace that this represents. Alan, welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. Appreciate it. I'd like to start with a little bit of a uh, a state of the nation in, in, in a sense of what the uh, internet security landscape looks like. What's happening out there? Uh, where are their vulnerabilities, especially the small and medium sized companies? Yeah, you know, the, the, the thing is, is the, the bad guys are going after the small and medium sized companies because they basically don't have the defenses that the large corporations do. The other sort of introduction that's come out, come out lately is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence now is creating a whole new dimension uh, in the cybersecurity field. It's a it's a war between us and them. How how far how much they can invest and how much we can invest in keeping up with each other. The interesting thing about cyber that a lot of people forget though is it's still a relatively new field. It hasn't been around for a long time. So therefore, it's it's sort of in its infancy stages, but it's going to advance quite quickly. So the the the. The, the atmosphere out there for the small and mid-sized businesses is very dangerous. The other thing that the bad guys are doing is they're looking to the small companies to penetrate them to move up the supply chain to the larger corporations. So in general, it's a very dangerous time right now. So you're saying they're targeting small companies as a gateway into the, co the companies that those maybe smaller companies are connected to because once you're inside, you then have contact information to uh, bigger uh, and probably more profitable uh, uh, cyber mm -hmm. attack targets. That's correct. I mean, just look at the defense industry, the defense industry contractors. What these guys are doing is they're going after the weakest link, the smallest link they can find, penetrating it and allowing them to sort of work their way up the chain. They've recognized that going at the top is not the answer to the question, that they need to start with the lower end because that's where the vulnerability or the, 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 the uh, lack of, of sort of protection is. So they're, they're really focusing on that small end. You can see that even in some of the uh, major um, uh, uh, ransomware attacks that have been happening around the country. It's not the big guys they're going after right away, they're going after the suppliers to the big guys. Okay, you talked about the weakest link. Is the weakest link a small company um, because it doesn't have the necessary tools that it needs and it unfortunately relies on the human element uh, that may be so much more easily drawn in on a phishing scheme or some other kind of attack? Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, over 80% of all of the issues that happen with ransomware or all, the, all of these other attacks come from people inside the corporation doing dumb things. Everybody thinks that they're spending millions and millions of dollars on all these sort of protectors outside the company when really the focus is on the inside where the issues really exist. That's why in our company, we focus on creating a platform that allows us to integrate all of the sort of tools that are coming in from the outside, putting them into a data pool so we can analyze and look at what we think are the real threats in integrating all of that, which right now, most of these companies out here today have everything that is sort of stovepiped and the bad guys are looking for ways to get in between. What we then do is we present it to our user community in a usually user understandable way so they can see where the real threats are coming from and how to remediate them. In addition, we provide a managed service which constantly does vulnerability assessments, phishing tests, training and education to allow these companies to really be focused on the performance of the individuals inside the corporation uh, because that's where the real problem exists. So what is it about your tools and training that allow small and medium-sized companies to overcome that resistance to, eh, can't really afford it. Uh, is it really that big of a problem? Uh, trying to find a way to uh, not incur a cost that they don't see as being in addition to the bottom line. How is it that, you know, and I, and I think that that is, is a big challenge. So what is it that you're doing that's helping those companies to make a, a decision that's much easier for them to, to justify and understand as being a good choice? Great question. What we do is we start with 
a vulnerability assessment and says, let us come in and let us look at your company. Let us find out where the vulnerabilities may lie. And then the results of that, we present back to the management team. And that allows them to really make a management decision on, do I really want this protection? How do I want to prioritize? And we work with them on that on what are the most important things you need to focus on down to the least important things. And we will work with them on remediating it. As I said, the first step is really getting a benchmark understanding of where your vulnerabilities really are. And it's not an expensive thing to do, but it, the, the not doing it can be very expensive. It's kind of like having an insurance policy, isn't it? You're not going to drive yeah. your car down the road without an insurance policy. And you got to wonder why are so many companies willing to leave themselves so vulnerable without the appropriate insurance? I think what's, what's happening here is a couple of things. One is that the, the skill sets in cybersecurity becoming so specialized, like the medical profession. You can't just hire general cybersecurity people in your corporation. You really need that specialized approach. That's why we've created a network of over 200 cybersecurity experts around the world that we bring into these small companies to specifically deal with their individual problems. The other thing that our platform allows us to do is to bring in these the right solutions for that particular company. We can actually personalize our solution to each corporation. And the other thing that's interesting is the life expectancy of most of these software solutions today is 18 to 24 months. And a lot of cyber companies are building their solutions around a particular piece of software. We've decided not to do that. We've created a platform, an integration platform that allows us to be sort of future proof. Whereas new entrants come into the marketplace, we can unplug the old and plug in the new, thus keeping our companies up to date with exactly what's going on in the industry. So we chose a bit of a different route than most cyber companies. And so you're making your programs and platforms agile, uh, which really allows you then to be uh, a service, not just a program. Exactly, exactly. What we do is we call the humanization of, of, of cyber. We're able to plug in all of these technology solutions, aggregate them into what we call a data lake, use artificial intelligence and knowledge management to synthesize the results and to, to identify, identify where the real threats are, and then present them on the other side in a humanly understandable way. The, a lot of the solutions today, all they do is provide volumes and volumes and volumes of this is what's happening to your company, but no real way of fixing it or no real way of, of adequately understanding it. So being a former CIO myself and dealing with all of this, we decided that we were going to create a, a new, a different type of integration where we're not, we're sort of agnostic. But we, what we've done is created a technology on one side and the humanization on the other. So for investors, they're looking at this and they're saying, OK, what does this market, uh, this space look like as far as opportunity is concerned? Well, as I said, it's still in the infancy stages, but it's, it's in the billions. The reason that we chose the SMB market, too, is because um, they don't have the capability or capacity to invest like the larger corporations do. But there's tens of thousands of them just in the United States alone and more in Canada and more around the world. And we feel that that this this market is really ripe for our kind of service where we can really bring them the capabilities that the large corporations have at a variable, affordable price. We have created an internal cost structure that's very low on fixed cost and very high on variable cost. So that way there, we're able to provide these services and, and generate margins at a much no, lower level than the competition can do. So what's the message to investors right now who might be looking at you going, okay, why now? Uh, why should I get behind you at this point? What's the opportunity for me? Well, I think what the, 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 big issues, the big issues are with our company is we have an experienced management team. Myself and the rest of our leadership have, have, had, have had experience both at running multi-billion dollar companies and running startups, which is very unique in the industry. We've spent a lot of years over the target and we felt that the perspective that we have created is one that is really what, need, what the market needs right now. Uh, instead of going out and selling software point solutions, we're out there selling an environment where people can use soft the use the cyber tools that we create them to better understandably manage their risks and their needs and the responses and we work with them we don't just throw the information out to them we come back to them and say let us partner with you and help you resolve these issues as well and the important thing is 
create an infrastructure where education and training is important. Because one of the things that we do is create a good set of reporting mechanisms where management can now use those as part of annual reviews or whatever to, to, to uh, understand uh, employee behavior. Because if there's no consequence, people don't change behavior. So by bringing these tools in, in, into the marketplace, it helps us to, to create that dimension for the management as well. Great time to be looking at integrated cyber. Thank you. I think it is. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time today.